It's been almost exactly six months since I stopped working on the shed. There's a couple of reasons why I stopped. The first is that the next step in the build process was to paint it. And when I finished up last November, it got too cold to paint. Now the other reason I stopped working on it is I actually sprained my ankle pretty bad right around the holidays, so I had to let that heal up over the winter anyway. Well, it's finally warm enough here in Connecticut to paint, so that's what we're gonna do now. Just for the sake of reference, here's the paint that I decided to go with. And it's not mixed really right now, but I had it tinted to match the color of my house, which you can see by this dot right here. So I'm gonna get this stirred up and we'll get started painting. Now, I'm not gonna make you guys sit through painting. So here's the shed before I paint it. So the bulk of the shed is now painted. So I got the paint color match to a piece of my siding at Home Depot, but it came out just a shade greener than the house. Now, in this camera, it seems to look real green <laughs> compared to what it does in real life, but it is just a shade or so off from the house. But driving by at 40 miles an hour, you'll never notice the difference, especially when I get the trim put on. The next thing I'm gonna do is start building my doors. I've measured my first door opening and I've got 77 and three quarter inches high by 72 and a quarter inches wide. And I've taken several measurements and found that it's reasonably square, surprisingly enough. So I'm gonna set up these doors so that it's a set of double doors that opens in the middle is, and is hinged on the sides. The next thing I wanna do is cut the material for my door panels. And I'm gonna use the same material that I used for the siding for the doors. Now, a more experienced carpenter would have planned this out better so that the scrap from the cutouts could have been used to make the doors. But, I didn't think that far ahead when I was putting the siding up. And the way that I lined everything up, the seams are gonna be a problem. So in other words, I've got a seam right here, but the center of the door is gonna be here. So if I use my scraps, I'm gonna to have to cobble them together and build a door frame to support that. And I suppose I could, but I think what I'm gonna do instead is use fresh sheets, cut out the size I need for each door, and make sure that I line up the grooves so that everything comes together nicely. So to get started, I'm gonna measure how much distance I have from the edge of the groove here to the edge of where I cut. And that looks to be three and five eighths inches. So when I cut my door panel out of my material, I'm gonna make sure I start my measurement that far away from the edge of the end groove. So now I'll get the other panel cut for the right side door. That's gonna be the same size as the left side. The only difference is, is I'm gonna work from this side to start my 36 inch measurement instead of that side. Now that I have my door panels cut out, I need to build a frame to support them. I'm gonna make a frame for each panel about an inch smaller than the panel itself. So 35 inches by 76 and a half. I got my frame boards cut to length. So now I'll do the assembly here on my nice flat garage floor. So this will tend to kind of want to square itself up as I assemble it, but I'll use my square to get the corners as close as I can before I put the screws in. I've got the door frames all built. Now I just need to attach the panels to them. So to get this mounted, I've got my half inch overhang established on this side and down on this corner. But because this is bowed, when I measure over there, it's less. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting some screws in to get this to flatten out and then kind of just check everything as I go to make sure it centers up. So both doors are all built. The next thing to do is paint them. So while I wait for this paint to try, I've got a few other things I can work on. I finally made some filler panels for down here below the doors from the scrap left over from cutting the door panels. Now 
Now that the paint's dry, I can take a look at laying out the trim boards on my doors. So for all the doors in the shed, I'm going to be using 1x4s for my trim boards. On the left side of the left door, I'm going to butt this board up against the bottom and the left edge and run it that way. But the board that's going to be in the middle, I'm going to have that overlap the edge by half of its width or an inch and three quarters. That way when the doors close and mate together, this will kind of cover the seam between the two doors. So I've got all the trim boards cut to length and just dry fit here on the doors just to see how everything goes together. This all looks pretty good to me. Might need a little fine tuning before I lock everything in place. But before I do, I'm gonna pull these boards off and paint them. So the paint's all dry on the trim boards. I'm gonna get them lined up where they need to be and start screwing them down to the doors. Now you guys probably saw this coming, but I didn't. When I went to put the first screw in the wood over there, the end of it split. So I think I'm gonna to need to drill some pilot holes before I put my screws in so the wood doesn't split. So you can see I'm using my tape measure as a guide so I can put the screws at even intervals and I'm using my square to make sure that I keep the screws relatively in line with each other. Now I am going to paint over this when I'm done one more time, but the screw heads will still be visible when you're close to the shed. So I'm just trying to keep them somewhat lined up so I don't look like a complete hack with this thing. I've got the trim all set. What I'm going to do now is carry the doors up to the shed and see if they still fit in the openings. Everything actually looks pretty good. Now, there's a little bit of a gap here, which I expected, and I'll take that up with the trim around the side of the doors. So now that I've got my doors dry fit up here, I'm gonna start laying out the surrounding trim. So I've measured across the doors, and I've got 72 and an eighth. I'm gonna cut this just a hair longer than that to give myself a little room to play with. So for the vertical trim, I'm actually gonna start my measurement down here where the siding starts at the bottom. Because underneath the door, I'm gonna end up having a ramp, and I just want the trim to kind of extend down and trim out the side of that ramp, I guess. So I'll start my measurement at the bottom of the siding, and then I'll accommodate the three and a half inch width of the top trim board that'll be here, plus maybe just a little bit more for clearance so the door can swing open and close without hitting it. I've got all the trim pieces cut to length and I dry fit them up here just to see if everything was going to work and it looks okay. This right side trim piece is just a tiny bit short. Something is just a little bit out of square here. So I will cheat this up on the final assembly about an eighth of an inch or so at the bottom. And when all is said and done, you'll never notice that it's cheated up a little bit. So now I'll pull these trim pieces down and paint them to match everything else. I've got my outer trim pieces painted and ready to install. I've got the doors loose and floating in here so that I can move them around, make sure that they're level and kind of even this gap out between both sides of the door. To keep the door from falling out, I've temporarily screwed a block of wood to the frame so it can't go anywhere, but it still can kind of move around in here and be adjusted as needed. Now, just like on the doors, to keep the wood from splitting, I'm gonna drill some pilot holes for the screws. So now I'm going to put in one screw to hold it in place. Now I'll grab my level and my tape measure and make sure that this thing is fairly level and square to this groove that's in the siding all the way up. Once I got this where I wanted it by kind of shoving the door over, I put a second screw here to hold it in place. Before I put the rest of the screws in this sideboard, I've got the top board tacked in just for alignment now I'll go check that side and make sure everything still lines up over there. So I've got the trim boards all tacked up and in place. So now I can put all the rest of the screws in. We're finally almost ready to install the hinges. And here's a look at the ones I'm gonna use. I ended up finding these at Lowe's. Now they actually didn't have enough for me to do all the doors. I want three hinges per door. So hopefully when I go back, they'll have a new shipment and I'll be able to get the rest of the hinges I need. But for now, I've got enough to do this door, so we should be good to go. 
So I've got all the gaps between the door panels and the side trim optimized. Now I'm going to bring in my hinges and I'm going to mark off where the location of the holes are and drill some pilot holes since I know this wood is prone to splitting. So I drilled just one pilot hole over here in this middle hole. That way I can put this first screw in and then I can fine tune the position of my hinge. I think I've got that where I want it. So now I'll drill the rest of my pilot holes. Get the rest of these screws installed. Okay, now I'll just repeat this process on the other five hinges. All the hinges are on, as you can see. I took that block off on the inside, so now I should be able to just open the doors. And everything looks good. Now, as you saw when I opened it, it was binding a little bit. And the reason for that is actually down here. This is uneven. So I'll just have to kind of scrape this down a little bit so that there's some clearance. And it should be good to go. So through the magic of video editing, we now have a second door identical to the first. Now I did one thing different on this door that I should have done on the first one. And honestly, if I was more experienced at building sheds, I would have thought of on the first one, but at least I got it on the second one. So as I mentioned a couple of clips ago, this door kind of sticks at the bottom. I haven't ironed that out yet, but it should be easy enough to fix it. Now on this one, when I set it up for alignment, I actually thought to put these shims underneath the doors so that when everything was aligned, they were off the base by however thick this is, maybe eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch, whatever it is. So then once I got everything done and mounted in place, I just took these off and now <laughs> it doesn't bind when the doors open and close. Right, now the only other thing that's different from this door to that one, and I can't help myself but point out these flaws, is that this board is bowed out on the right. I tried to do the best job I could when picking these boards out. I thought I got pretty straight ones. And for the most part I did. I guess this one got away from me. Either way, it's really not off that much, but noticeable to me. I did buy some latches for these doors so that I can latch them and lock them. But I'm not sure exactly how I want to install those. If I want to put them horizontally here, or if I want to put them at the top and the bottom so that the doors are more solidly bolted to the frame of the shed. Now obviously I can't reach the top one partly because I don't have my ramps in down here just yet and also partly because I'm short. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off putting those latches in. The doors are staying shut pretty much on their own, especially this one that's binding at the bottom and I don't have anything in the shed yet so I'm not worried about anyone coming in here and stealing anything. So I'm going to save the latches for later and I'm going to work on enclosing the soffits and the overhangs. So for the overhangs, I'm just going to use scrap pieces of the shed sides, the LP smart panels, cut them to width and I'll just kind of put them up here in place. I'll orient these so that the grooves on the overhangs line up to the grooves in the sides of the shed and I'll have the lap joints at the end overlap just like the walls do. Now before I screw this in place, I will paint it just so that I don't have to stand up here on the ladder and then risk getting green paint all over my fascia boards. It's gonna take me some time to kind of finish that up in between all the other things that I'm doing. And I wanna get this video posted sooner than later. So we'll take a look at those finishing touches in my wrap up video, which you'll see later in the summer. For now, if you enjoyed this one, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more of the videos in my shed build series, check the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.